when's yeah. Corey? Okay, when's George? Like I was just right. like, da, 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 like just yeah. and all these yeah. things. Sp- I like I just like to say spinning plates. <laughs> spinning plates. I you just know, had all these. This one's going. This one's going. You're like no 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 no. It's been yeah yeah. It was it was magic watching things come together. George the Tech. Hey everybody, it's George the Tech. We've been having a great run with our profiles of our clients lately, and I'm really excited that Rena Marie Volano could join me today. She's a busy voice actor who's gone through a big life transformation, and she's here to share the story of what's been going on in her life and her home studio journey, really. So here to tell you all about it is my good friend and long client, long time client now, Rena Marie Villano. Hi, Rena Marie. Hi, George. Thank you so much for having me uh, on for this. You, I mean, we go way back, man. We've been we friends and been working with you now for well over a decade. And yep, it's true. I was so grateful that you were available, that you were, I mean, because you needed to get on a plane and, and fly, my friend, and you did, and you, you came to my new home. And so, yeah, I can't wait to get into this with you. You were yeah. So we have a history of working together. Well, I've helped you with a, a few different home studio scenarios. Yes, yes. Um, but you didn't always have an ISO booth like this one, right? So when did you in your career decide it was time to do something more than a converted closet or some other home well, brew solution? So I actually started back in the, my first home studio was in 2002, around that time. Mm-hmm. And I didn't have a booth. I didn't, I really just kind of made a recording space for myself in my bedroom. And then ultimately bought a house in Boise, Idaho, moved in, made a little recording space for myself. I had an actual studio room, but I just still didn't have a booth. It wasn't until 2007 that I bought a whisper room. And so that was my first booth. And... When I moved to Los Angeles in 2009, I brought that with me and I set that up in the first apartment that I had there. And I was there for a few years, moved down the hall to another apartment, kept the whisper room. And then ultimately, when I moved to my second, well, really third address in Los Angeles, that was in Mid-City, it was time... I wanted something that was a little roomier because that whisper room was just the smallest, like I think it was two and a half by three and a half. Oh yeah, the little baby one. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I really wanted a little more room. And yep. the duplex I lived in was had a nice long walk-in closet. And so that was my first time really building out a booth for myself and mm-hmm. hiring a contractor to do that and insulating mm-hmm. and just doing the, the full nine. Yep. And had that for the years that I was living there. And then um, when I moved to uh, the last house I lived in, uh, where I was there for six years, again, I, you know, there was a second bedroom available and I intended not to put myself in a closet again, but that yeah. really, that ended up really being something that was necessary for, for the best um, sound insulation yeah. and whatnot. So I did it. I did it again. It was the most you know? practical solution at the time. It was the yeah. most practical solution. And, right. and I went, and I utilized you for some of that as well, because mm-hmm. you suggested that we not only, you know, insulate the the closet and the space that was my actual booth, but the attic above. And so remember, mm-hmm. I worked with you and you suggested, you know, Corey come on board mm-hmm. and, you know, he insulated the entire attic space over my whole studio. And that was really profoundly helpful. And you also recommended Indo window inserts, which I oh, bought. Oh, yeah, that's right. And had them custom made. And I mean, that just transformed that space. The booth was amazing. The Indo inserts were just so incredibly effective. And then having that attic space insulated above my, my edit, you know, edit bay basically was yeah. kick ass. Yeah. Um, yeah. It worked great. It worked great. But then, until, until I began considering leaving LA. <laughs> Essentially, there were, there were things happening in my life that kind of needed, I realized that I wanted more flexibility. I really kind of wanted the ability to travel more and to move if necessary. And I just was in a place where I really needed to consider a different setup in every aspect of my life. And so the first most grounding thing 
that I had to address was my studio because I was so yeah. completely anchored into that physical yes. space in that house. Th- this was a two-part process for me. First, mm-hmm. I needed to really transform my booth back into the closet, and I did so you know, right. pr- prist- pristinely. I mean, I made sure char- I kept yeah. all the pieces. I mean, it was, it was, you know, we, yeah. we basically just put it right back as it was when I found it. In comes this massive Studio Bricks booth, and, and, mm-hmm. you know, and, until it was time to well, I mean, put the you, booth to the test. And actually, you're, in a, you're an incredible planner. <laughs> Maybe you don't. It's may, called I don't know OCD, you, George. Maybe it's, it's OCD. Called OCD. I, don't, I don't know how you feel about it, but you're really good at planning and you think things through and you're really, yeah. you're very thoughtful in everything that you do. And yes. so you having made that decision that you knew at some point the move was going to happen. It was inevitable. Yeah. You made the decision and that you planned way in advance, even to the point of having the booth. Because you could have, a lot of people probably would have, bought the booth and then shipped it to the next house and then you right. start all over. And then and then at the pr- previous place, you would have to, well, I guess you just would have left it the way it was and then moved on, you know? Yeah. But you planned ahead. You made sure the, the everything was restored the way it was, so the That's home could right. be given to the next That's people. Right. And it, it, it and just everything was just so well thought through. And then the way Corey and you and Corey really made sure the booth was packed, yeah, impeccably so, okay, to make that so journey. This whole piece is where it just gets, it really just gets so so crazy and phenomenal. And I'm I had sort of given up on well not given up but i had tabled the notion of leaving la by the time Mm -hmm. i got into you know the end of 2022 i really felt like i think i'm not leaving i think i'm gonna stay and i'm just gonna you know okay i'm gonna stay Mm -hmm. so i signed a new lease and i was like i was into 2023 and you know the majority of that year went by and then and and one of the main factors in determining my leaving is that I wanted to be closer to my family. I wanted to be closer to my mom. My mom had been working mm-hmm. for years on this deeply personal project that I had always wanted to get my hands on and help her with. And I, for years, I had been trying to get her to come to Los Angeles. And I finally realized this isn't going to work. And so I really had to sort of open up my mind to a different life for myself. I didn't know I was going to actually do that until I went to see my mom uh, to visit her in Boise, back in Boise, in August. And I, I, I went there and not intending to leave LA. And when I left there, I knew that I was leaving LA. And so it was just like, oh my gosh. And so I came back to Los Angeles and you're right, thankfully, I had done all the legwork in 2022. So it was really just a matter of, you know, figuring out where was I going? What Mm -hmm. was that house going to look like? You know, so we started looking to, you know, at houses, you know, we're looking at a few different houses. Nothing was, nothing was right. Nothing was right. And I had said, I I just need this house to be perfect. I I just need, you know, these are the things I need. If I can just have these things. And I started kind of wavering on a few, like, okay, I guess I can give here. I can give there. All of a sudden, a house became available that had not been on the market. It came back on the market. And I was like, wow, this is everything. This is everything I wanted. And I wanted a lot, George. Wow. I had and like, it was not far from her either. And it was very close to her. It was exactly in the the place uh, where I wanted it to be. And the the most incredible piece of all of this is that the house was feet from a video I had taken the day I was leaving Boise to go back to L.A. And I had just kind of put it out to the universe like, man, I just really want this view. And it was like that view that none of the other houses oh we had looked God. at. And then all of a sudden, this one night, 2 a.m., she hits me up, blowing up my phone. Ah, I think you need to look at this. And so we looked at it. Crazy, amazing story. We did, in fact, put in an offer. We bought the house. We closed it in 21 days. And there I was. And everything was happening so quickly. That was put us at like October 13th. But then I found out that I was live announcing the Game Awards in the first week of December. (laughs) And so I'm sitting there on October 13th. And I'm going, wait a minute. No, no, no. This is not going to work. I can't move my whole life and everything in the middle of November, get my studio set up, settle five cats and my dog, you know, (laughs) get my bearings and then bounce out for a week to go back to LA. No, that can't do that. I need to speed Mm. up this timeline. So Mm. 
I started, you know, trying to, I think I even reached out to you and I asked you about structural stuff, trying to figure out where the booth is going to go, where, you know, where, so Mm -hmm. (laughs) by the grace of, I'm not a religious person, but by the grace of God, I was able to get the plans for this house. Amazingly, the house was built in 2011. That year, there was a particular cutoff point where the county stopped saving those records. And my house happened to be right on that, the lip of that cutoff. So, boom, I was able to get the plans. I reached Everybody, out to if you buy a house, make sure you get the if plans. If you can get your hands on those plans. Get your hands on those plans and put them in the closet or the attic because you never know when you're going to need That's right. That's right. And luckily, the seller was very much like me. He kept okay. records of things. Yeah. And so not only did I have the plans from the county, but I had all of the other documentation that he had acquired when he purchased wow. it. So that was amazing. Great. Great. Reached out to a structural engineer. I really wanted my booth and my studio to be on the second floor. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was thinking I wanted it kind of in the front of the house. The structural engineer said, you know, the best place for this based on the weight and the dimensions. I mean, he looked at the plans from the mm-hmm. house. He looked at the plans for this booth and ultimately mm. told me these are the two best places for it. You know, the the joists will be best. You know, And he said, I would really like to see you put an OSB sleeper underneath that booth to help distribute the weight across the floor joists a little bit better. Mm. Yeah. And so that was another piece. Okay, now I got to find someone to, because I didn't, I knew it had to be assembled in LA and it had to come with me because I knew it had to be the first thing that you dealt with when you got right. it. So, yeah. you know, again, by the grace of God, there was a, a contractor that I had, a handyman that I had worked with before who was doing painting for me. He was able to make a little space in his schedule to construct this sleeper platform for me so that it was ready to go when the movers rolled in on November 4th. And, you know, then it was, and Corey, Corey happened to yeah. be available on, I think, November 3rd, because there was, there was, we were doing a lot of back and forth, like how, yes. when are the movers going to be available? Okay, when's yeah. Corey? Okay, when's George? Like, I was just right. like, like, just, yeah. just, <laughs> and all these yeah. things. I just like, I like to say spinning plates. <laughs> spinning plates. You know, I just had all these, this one's going, this one's going, you're like, no, 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 it's been, yeah, yeah. It was, it was magic watching things come together. It was incredibly stressful. And yeah. I thought I was going to lose my mind on more than yeah. one occasion. But Corey ended up being available. And you're right. I mean, he was so diligent in the way he and his helper broke down the booth, packed mm-hmm. each piece of this booth so carefully. You know, each I piece them. was packed like, you know, a piece of art. Yeah. Yes. You know? Moving blankets, foam corner edges. I mean, the whole nine. Yep. And mm-hmm. then the movers rolled in on the 4th of November. It was a nightmare of a day, but we got everything. I ended up having a 26-foot truck plus a 6 by 12 trailer that I had to run and grab. I had I had it on standby just in case. Oh, I was man. praying we could get everything into the 26-foot truck. <laughs> yeah. Nope. So like 3 p.m. that day, I, 4 p.m., I ran down to U-Haul, snapped up that trailer. We ended up filling that to the brim. It was yeah. bananas. Yeah. And then, you know did the drive up here and then you flew in on i think was it the 8th of sounds november about right sounds about right the 8th or yeah. the 9th mm-hmm. and then it just so happened that you were able to find this great task rabbit gentleman to yeah. help you do the booth assembly and you yeah. guys hit it off i mean that was so yeah. cool you had he was a bike you know, geek he was a so bike was like, geek okay like we you. totally hit it off yeah the fact that you were available to fly up here and spend a few days helping me you know, you you guys assembled this so beautifully right in the spot. I mean, just, it's, everything fit perfectly. Yeah. He assembled my new desk, my new standing desk, and then the two of you, you know, did all the cable management and whatnot. And, I mean, it's just, it came together so beautifully. And then you even were able to stay for a couple more days, which was so great yeah. to be able to go and, you know, take you to dinner and just kind of exhale for a minute. So since you've settled in, you know, I've been nagging you about doing this interview since I left that. <laughs> I was like, let's just give her some space. <laughs> a few months have gone by. Oh my what, gosh. What has settled in for you now? Like, I know you added some furniture recently. I did. So when you came in and we did the initial setup of my desk, I wanted my TR6s. I wanted them kind of on that 
upper shelf of my desk. And I had my, my preamp, my M5 was just mm-hmm. sitting on that, that top shelf. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was just feeling too congested. And I'm, I'm yeah. an, an extremely aesthetically sensitive person. Yeah. If something's not right, honey, I'm not stopping yeah. till it is. Like, I'm just like, yeah. this is not right. It's not working right. for me. Right. So I knew that I needed to uh, make some tweaks there. I wanted to get the preamp off the desk. And I start, so I started looking at sidecars and found this wonderful uh, company. I found them on Etsy, r- r- you know, oh. Gear Hive, found them on Etsy, linked huh. off to their website and started looking at the things that, that this, this man makes and was at, like really fell in love with this this 8U stash sidecar that he makes, which has a little sort of like a little, little uh, pocket, a little, cabin little at the cabbie, bottom. little cubby there. Yeah. And, and you know, 8U, so I had lots of space. You know, initially mm-hmm. I was just going to put my, my M5 in there. But I wanted a little more space because I don't know. Maybe I'll add another piece of equipment at some some point. I don't. Yeah. I don't have really anything yeah. in my audio chain. I don't work with anything that really. I don't have a channel yeah. strip or any of that. Lots of outboard gear and all that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't you have any of that. I don't need it. Yeah. But once I got that installed, I re- remembered. Oh my gosh, my Telos Zephyr is sitting in my garage. That's it. I was like, I'm like, I. Yes, 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 yes. And I was like, I'm. I'm going to rack mount that baby and turn it back on, even though I'll never use it again. It just, yeah. you know, I, I, I bought that when I lived here, you, you know, I mean, yeah. 15 years ago. So it was yeah. Yeah. really and it special. it was 4000 to... plus dollars. That's right. At That's the time right. when you bought it. That's yeah. right. And if I tried to sell it now, I don't know. I don't even, it wouldn't, it's not bucks, worth it. Yeah, maybe. exactly. <laughs> not worth it. I'd Sad. rather. So I put that in and so I've got this. Mm-hmm really beautiful sidecar that I love now and mm-hmm. my desk is a little more I'm a little more airy there's more space mm-hmm. and I'm really pleased with it so now I feel a sense of cohesion you know it's mm. like I'm like okay I can come in I can get straight to work the booth feels great the desk feels great so I ended up putting my desk in front of the window because I wanted a similar configuration to what I had in Los Angeles because right. my cables are a certain length. I didn't want to have 30-foot cables. I mean, I, I wasn't right. looking for that, you know. So my desk is in front of the window. It's nice because I can look out and see these. the Boise Mountains are beautiful, and, mm-hmm. and I see that view every single day. So, you know, in a perfect world, I would probably like to have the desk uh, not directly in front of the window, but yeah, yeah, it yeah. is what it is, and it's it's inspirational. It's a little there's a little back. It's backlit, you know, and I could certainly yeah, put yeah, some. Right. I could put yeah. some darker curtains on there, but I don't want to. Yeah. It's like it's yeah. it keeps me in touch with the outdoors, which I uh-huh. is important for my sanity. So. Well, it's amazing how well it's come together, and I, I want to know a little bit about what your work is that you're finding yourself doing the most often. What are, what are your archetypal type clients and then what are the wins that you get from time to time where you're like oof i got i can't believe i got cast in this the majority of my work is in radio imaging i do a lot of that is really my bread and butter i love live announce i love it and and as i mentioned to you that was an important gig that i i was keeping my sights set on once i got settled here and it all came together beautifully i got myself settled I jumped on a plane in the beginning of December. I went to LA. I live announced the Game Awards, and that went off beautifully. And so, once and live I came announces back, are always in the flesh, right? The, the live announces I've done have always been in person. So, you know, that is a piece of my kind of tool bag that I really love, and I wish I wish there were more opportunities. But it's a very specific. It's a very specific type of work. You know, you have to be yeah. able to work under pressure. You have to be able to, you know, respond on cue. And I just, I love it. It reminds me of very live radio, energy. which is where I came from. Yeah, so, live, 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 high live, energy. Live, live, I like it live. rehearsals. You know? Rehearsals, You're yeah. there. Are you all, yeah. sometimes in the physical room with the performance, or is it almost always you're cordoned in a little For me, hallway, I'm, I'm always off stage. Yeah. yeah, I'm in a room mm-hmm. off stage from there. And it was the same, yeah. you know, when I would do the Hollywood Film Awards or I did, I live announced Carol Burnett's 90th birthday on NBC. Again, mm. I was in a trailer off from the venue. And, and so I've never oh, been, yeah. you know, never been right in there because we need, yeah, a, yeah. we need a sound. We need a quiet space to work. So yeah. radio imaging is the most of it. I do promo mm-hmm. and, you know, commercial reads here and there. Is there still I, something you aspire to do in voiceover? Oh boy. 
At some point, I think I would like to do a little bit with video games. I've kind of avoided them over the majority of my career. My concern has been the vocal strain. Mm -hmm. uh, I just yeah. can't risk. Uh, I just can't risk, you know, getting a nodule That's, or blowing out a cord or something. Yeah, that so one big I've, job could could disrupt so many other. Yeah. Jobs. So you know, I've, but I sort of. I, I know I try to audition for the things that are not vocally strenuous and whatnot, and I still haven't really, I've done a little bit here and there, but I haven't really cracked into that genre. And at some point, I, I would like to, um, maybe a little bit of animation just for the freedom and fun and kookiness of it. I just, mm -hmm. I tend to do a lot of announcing, you know, promo, trailers. I love trailers. I've voiced, you know, some some different trailer campaigns and TV spots, mm -hmm. and I really love that. I think for me, I would love to do more in the way of live announce, but the opportunities are kind of finite. So it's a limited resource. So well, day in, just, day out, you know, I, it's yeah. my my day is basically, you know, auditions coming in, radio copy coming in from all over the place, all over the country. I work, you know, on on Sirius satellite as well. Mm -hmm. I've been Mad Dog's voice now for my goodness since for for fourteen, fifteen years or wow. more which yeah. is just amazing to me. Yeah. And so I'm always in the studio looking, waiting for copy to come in. Promo stuff, I just did a promo session the other day. And, you know, my day is kind of interspersed. And then auditions, mm -hmm. of course, that those are, those are also our jobs, you know? Like, it's, yeah. it is my job to audition. So I, I think yeah. of those as jobs. Tell me about your, your equipment. You're from the microphone right into where you edit and how you do all that. Okay, so I use a Sennheiser 416. And I've used this this guy now for a really long time. I mean, I think it's 2006 or seven. You know that um, mic exceedingly well. Yes, very much yes. so. I've used the Sennheiser since since forever. I record into my Avalon M5, and then I work in Pro Tools, and mm -hmm. I use an Apogee Apogee Duet Three. I use a, a high pass filter, and that's about it. You know, yeah. I'm not using stacks. I'm not doing any of that. Yeah. I'm I'm yeah. very much kind of old school in the sense that I want I want my environment to be perfect. I want yeah. quiet and I want something that authentically captures my voice and I don't I don't necessarily want any of that manipulation. And plus I work with so much talented. of my work is is radio and you yeah, know you, you work with think talented about, producers and engineers. Exactly. The and they're time. laying on layers and layers of production. Yes. I mean I, I they need yeah. they need raw from me is what they need. Yes. So. so it was all worth it because you have that consistent environment. Yeah. It sounds great every time you can count on it. And you have the years of experience to deliver clean audio, dynamically yeah. controlled audio too. Yeah. And a lot of the reason a lot of especially newer voice actors need those stacks is to control their dynamics because their right. dynamics are out of control. And right. uh, you know, so the better you are, the better your room the better your equipment and the better your instrument and the better your talent, all the and experience, the less and less and less you end up needing to lean on, yeah, on all that stuff. So that says a lot. I've had clients tell me, "I you you I you made stacks for me, I don't know, eight years ago, but I don't use them anymore, really, barely, almost never." And I'm like, "That's great." I <laughs> That's will. Awesome. The, the thing that I did have you set up for me when we bought when I bought the Studio Bricks, and it has mm -hmm. been so helpful. Is remember. You came in and you you just you just put an insert in my in my Pro Tools template uh -huh. to help cancel out the sound created by the the air. Oh, the ventilation. The, the ventilation system. So you can keep the ventilator running and still exactly. So it's yeah, circulating yeah. the air, but we're not. Yeah. But my mic's not picking it up, and so that's yeah, the one. Yeah. That's the one little little tweak that I mm -hmm. do utilize. Mm -hmm. And and I thought about it, this move. Really made. I mean, there were moments in time where I was working out of my my mobile setup essentially, and I was pulling my hair out, going, "Wow, why didn't I have George make me?" A, you know, like I I mm. needed a stack at that point in time mm. to you know run my sound through that would have given me this quietness, you right. know, with a mobile rig. And I was like, I need right, to have right, him do that right. in the future, and I am going right. to have you do that in the future for when mm. I want because I want to travel. I want to be yeah. able to have that consistency in my yeah. you know, out of my mobile setup. So that is something I'm going to be hitting you up for probably okay. here in the near future. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'll be ready. So, Well, I, it's really great to hear your story. It's just great to see you again, too, of course. <sighs> Thank you. And it's inspiring. Hopefully this is inspiring to some of you, to yes. that are going through these changes in life and want to relocate and are making that big decision. 
you know, yeah. overwhelming. And the thing that the th piece of mm -hmm. advice that I would say that was given to me is this is an elephant and you never eat an elephant in one bite, right? Mm -hmm. So you're mm -hmm. just taking yeah. bites out of that elephant, you know, yeah. <laughs> and just kind yeah. of just, okay, what's the, what's the thing in front of me today? What's the phone call I have to make today? What do I, you know, what's the next piece? And I, and I had, I did a lot of that in this move. It was like, okay, I just have to stop and pan out, you know, working in yeah. pro tools. That's where my brain goes is I need to zoom <laughs> out. I need to look at the yep. whole time, you know, line here and go, okay, this is what needs to be addressed next. And I got so lucky and I really f am so grateful that I, I was able to just have all these people available. I couldn't have done this without you, George. You know, I just, oh, so it was, it was you guys and, you know, being available for me and giving me that guidance that I needed, not just your hands on, but actually giving me advice. And I mean, cause I, you know, I've on more than one occasion hit you up and been like, can you just, can you just please help me? <laughs> I just need to, can you give me your two cents on this? You know, so thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. Yeah, thank I'm glad you. you didn't have to go it alone. I'm glad you had the support <laughs> you needed and I'm yeah. glad you're in a place you're happy with and you're near your mom and yeah, it all sounds like a great outcome. Yeah, it really it, it is nice, and I can go back and forth to LA, which I love. You know, yeah. I'm just I can jump on a plane, I can be there in, you know, two hours, mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. I do feel like I'm I have found a way to kind of have the best of both worlds. But yeah, like I said, it was it was magic the way it came together, and I and I think the the lesson I'm taking away and sort of digesting right now is so many times in, in, in my life, and maybe somebody else will kind of relate to this, I tend to be a very driven, tenacious person. I'm always pushing. I'm driving. I, I'm not good at giving yeah. up. I'm not a quitter, right? And yeah. so I think in this experience, once we found this house, it was just, it was kind of just delivered to us. And then it was a matter of racing to keep up with yes. all of these incredible things that were falling into place. And I was like, wow, this is different. Instead of like ugh, putting my shoulder into something and like pushing, right. I was like, whoa, you know, I think that's when you know something is right. When it's just mm. so incredibly sync, just these moments of synchronicity that make you just take yeah. your breath away and make you go, holy, what is going on? Wow. You know, mm. I want more of that in my mm -hmm. life going forward. Is that so, the, called the flow or something like that? Yeah, I don't know. I it's think it's flow. just about, yeah, being in the flow, you know, not yeah, pushing so being hard, being able to yeah. step out and go, hmm, am I yes. pushing something that isn't really serving me in the best yes. way that it could, you know? I'm, yeah, oh, that, that hits so, home. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to find that flow again. I'm pushing a lot of things out there right now in a lot of different directions and trying yeah. to get that flow again, so. yeah. I, I really appreciate your time. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you. And Thank you. Likewise. I'll get this out there for the world to see and learn from and get to know you a little bit better. Okay. And you know and what? If anybody it. has a question, honestly, they can reach out. Yeah. yeah. How do they find you? What, what if they want to book you? What if they're like, God, I got to get this one. <laughs> She's going to be great. <laughs> if on somebody wants to book me, then go to my website. It's renamarievolano.com. I'm with CESD. I'm with Haas mm -hmm. Management. I'm with Amplify Artists Group. All of these entities are obviously mm -hmm. available online. You can mm -hmm. find their websites. But they can also follow me on Instagram at Rena Marie Volano underscore VO. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. I mean, you can just search my name. Rena Marie is hyphenated. And yeah, Got I it. mean, I'm open. Send me an email. That's awesome. <clears throat> Thank you so much. George, I so appreciate you. I'm so glad we're friends and work, you know, that we have this work relationship that goes back. You've been integral in my, um, almost my entire career. So oh, please know how much I appreciate you. Thank you. Okay. All right. <laughs>